This video is all about the plastic plugs, rubber boots and crimps that Bosch used on a variety of cars including Mercedes, BMW, Citroen, Jaguar, Lancia, Opel, Porsche, Renault, Saab, Volvo and VW. In this video I'm going to be explaining the importance of these rubber boots and what happens if you don't have them. We're going to be showing you how to crimp these terminals properly using the proper tool and we're also going to be showing you how to remove these plugs from a wiring harness so that you can replace these boots if need be. We got our plugs, crimps and boots etc from a company in Germany called Repro Parts and I'll give you the full contact details and prices at the end of this video. Now before you get started with replacing your rubber boots you need to be aware that the rubber boots are different for different cars. So for example the Mercedes 280 SL the injectors have these curved plugs on whereas you'll find on a 450 SL um, those parts are straight. So when you order a kit from Repro Parts, just make sure that you select the right kit for your car. Another thing to point out is these boots are designed to fit right the way over the plug like that. And most people think they're there just to stop dust and moisture getting into the fittings. And that is true. But the other thing they do, which is crucially important, is they shield the wires from excessive engine heat. And if you don't have these boots over your plugs, what you'll find is over time that the injector harness wires, especially because they're right next to the engine block, get brittle and you may find that those wires start to crack. So it is important that you have these boots over the injector plugs and that you get the right shape. To demonstrate what an enormous difference this boot makes, we've got a heat probe wire here connected to our fluke, showing a temperature of 22.6 degrees Celsius. I'm going to start a stopwatch and use a Dyson hairdryer just to heat this up. And then I'm going to do the same thing without the boot on so you can see what an enormous difference it makes. We're going to do the same again without the rubber boot. I stopped that test early because I don't want to melt either the table or the wire, but with the rubber boot on, it took about a minute for the temperature to get the 50 degrees. Without the rubber boot, it took about five seconds and we let everything cool down between the tests. There are a few things that can stop your Dejectronic car starting at all or make it run extremely rough. And one of them is this little engine temperature sensor here. If you have a plug on there, that is open circuit, i.e. one of your wires is not connected, that will inc dramatically increase the resistance, obviously, to infinity and send a signal to the ECU to massively enrich the mixture to the extent that your car might not start. So, for example, if you have a frayed plug that's only got one or two wires still connected, you'll be increasing the resistance of that wire. But if one of those wires is not connected at all, you'll get a massively rich um, condition. And if those wires are touching because they're frayed, you'll get a massively lean condition. And that engine temperature sensor there can actually stop your car from starting in the first place. In order to change or renew the rubber boots on your car, you're going to need to take off these plastic plugs. And if you are very lucky, when you turn over the plastic plug, the back of it will be smooth like this new plug here. But you may find when you turn that plug over that you see these marks here. Which, are basically, which basically means that your plugs have been heat crimped and they will not come out without cutting them out. So if you find that your plugs have been heat crimped like that, which Mercedes did on earlier cars, you will need to heat up a blade like a Stanley knife blade and cut along here in order to be able to get these metal crimps out. If you are lucky enough to find that your plugs are smooth on the back, all you need to do is use a special crimp removal tool and slide it along that channel there. And you should find that once that you've done that, you can just pull the crimp out. And what that tool is doing, it is depressing that little tab there. Now on the newer crimps, you'll see that that tab is far more protruded and springy. But when you put the um, removal tool in, it presses that tab out and you're able to pull the 
crimp out. When you buy a kit from Repro Parts, they actually send you this tool here, which is a round tool. Personally, I prefer using a flat tool like that. You can also sometimes use a cable tie, will fit down that gap, or a piece of credit card. You can also use a bent hair clip sometimes, or even the metal strips inside windscreen, an old windscreen wiper um, will do the job as well. If you have this style of plug here and you can't be bothered to go to the rigmarole of heating up a knife and cutting each plug out individually and you decide to snip the wires, it is very important that when you strip the wire to add a new crimp on there that you use a proper pair of wire strippers to do that because these wires here are made up of about 20 different strands within them. And if you nick one of those wires or cut one of those wires, what you're doing is you're increasing the resistance of this wire here. And resistance is basically an equation of resistivity times the length of the wire divided by the area of the wire. And as I say, the area of this wire is made up of 20 individual strands. And if you start reducing that area, you are almost exponentially increasing the resistance of the wire. Now, that effect is quite small and probably won't have too much effect on the injector wires. But when you come to doing things like a temperature resistance, where the ECU is actually expecting a certain resistance from this to determine how much fuel is injected, then nicking those wires when you cut them or even cutting off strands is going to change the resistance. Here is a chart I bought from the engineering toolbox and you can see here copper wire. This is diameter here. So on a Mercedes, you're gonna be dealing with one and a half to two mil diameter wire. And you can see what the resistance here is at 20 degrees. And you can see how that resistance shoots up exponentially as the diameter of the wire decreases. Now, obviously, as I said, the wire is made up of 20 strands. So if you only had one strand left, you'd be down at this part of the chart here. So in my humble opinion, do not use a cheap set of wire strippers like this, not least because when you clamp the wire often to get this to cut properly, you need to move it around. And the chance of nicking a wire or cutting one of those strands is vastly in when you do that and secondly don't ever be tempted to use a set of crimpers like this to crimp these Bosch style um, crimps down you need a special crimping tool for this and I'll show you what that is we're going to be using a set of these Paladin ratchet crimpers here and the beauty of these crimpers is that they have interchangeable jaws depending on what job you're doing. Now, these particular jaws are number PA2033 and they exactly fit the Bosch style crimps that we're going to be using. It's important that you put the crimp into the crimper the right way around. And although this fits in perfectly and snugly like that, when you come to do a crimp, you've actually got to spin it around like that Make sure that it's in there perfectly square. And the advantage of these crimpers is, the ratchet crimpers, is you can then squeeze them down a couple of clicks. So you're not actually crushing the crimp, but that will hold that in place and allow you to slot the wire into the exact position to make the perfect crimp. There are a whole host of different types of wire strippers out there, but we'll be using these excellent Klein catapult wire strippers and the advantage of these strippers is they will give you a perfect wire strip every time. All you need to do is choose the right thickness wire that you're stripping and these um, this tool here will clamp the wire like this and then you just gently squeeze the handle together and that will strip the wire like this. So there's no moving of the tool around. You can use this in sort of confined spaces and there's no nicking of the wire or cutting of the strands. And the cutters on here are angled and they will give you a much better cut each time than if you just had straight cutters. The reason it's particularly important to be using the right tools or good tools to do this job is if you are doing this job in situ on your wiring harness 
and you're cutting off old wires and then stripping a little bit back to put a new crimp on, you don't want to mess that up because you're dealing with a limited amount of wire and if you have to do the job twice, you may not actually have enough wire to do that. And similarly, these crimps, when you buy them in a kit, you get exactly the number you need. So although it's a good idea to do a few practice crimps first, if you have the correct crimping tool to start off with, you'll find that you get more or less a perfect crimp every time without any messing about. I'm going to be stripping off about five millimeters of insulation for this job. That should give us the perfect amount of wire in the crimp. And obviously this is a double crimp here. The, the end crimp crimps the insulation and the first crimp here crimps the wire. And that is why you need a special crimping tool that takes account of that and has the right grooves in it to give you that perfect crimp. So with the crimp held loosely in the crimpers, you can just feed the wire through and you'll be able to see that wire just at the front there and then one-handedly normally you would not do this like this you just crimp that and you should get a perfect crimp now the moment of truth there we go one pretty much perfect crimp and obviously you do the pull test to make sure and that's looking good we're back down at the garage. This is our 280SL here, M110 engine, and this here is our engine temperature switch. And you can see that the wires here are frayed. There's only one or two strands left on that. The plastic plug is cracked, and also there is no um, rubber boot on here. So we're gonna cut these wires here in the first instance, and then put a new plug and boot on there. Before you cut these wires, you must remember which way round they go. So we're looking at the flat side of the plug. You can see it's got those two heat crimps on there, so we can't use a plug removal tool to get this off. We're just gonna cut the wires here. We're gonna remove what's left of the old boot. Gosh, that's just so hard. You can see that's just disintegrating. You can see actually these wires are quite brittle and cracked further back. Now we've got plenty of um, wire on here. So I think I'm gonna cut this further down. We are not gonna make the schoolboy error of forgetting to put the boot on. These new rubber fittings are quite tight and what you might find helps is if you put a little bit of lube on the actual wire. We've just used a tiny little squirt of silicon on there and then a little bit of tape around the wires just to keep everything together so it fits down that hole. We're just using the smallest hole on here, the 16 over 14, and we're gonna strip that back. slotted that in and we just need to crimp and hopefully that's the perfect crimp there we have two pretty much perfect crimps last thing we have to do is just slide this plastic plug on remembering which side the brown was on it was on the right hand side looking at the bottom of this plug you just need to also remember that the tabs here need to be at the top of the plug so I'm going to slide both of these in together and hoping that we'll hear a nice snap as they click in like that. And then all we need to do is put the boot over here. Now we just need to slot this plug over and then put the boot over. And that there is pretty much job done. We've got a nice boot on there that will protect the wires and also shield that from dust and moisture. I'm going to continue to do some of the other boots on this car but off camera and leave this video here just showing you where we got the Paladin um, crimpers and the wire strippers and the various boots and crimps etc. We got those rubber boots and crimps from this company here djetparts.com it's a German company um, they can translate into English or German and when you roll over the menu here you'll see that they do a whole host of cars on the Mercedes-Benz ones, which is what we're interested in, they do pretty much every single D-Jet Tronic model. As I mentioned earlier, just make sure you get the right shaped boots for your car. 
These guys also do the rubber boot for the ECU and they sell these boots individually and they also sell the ECU plug individually. And if you have a Mercedes, you'll notice some of the plugs, some of the temperature plugs have this style of plug, that hook often cracks. And these plugs here are often melted. So if you need any of that stuff at all, you can get all of that from these guys here, djetparts.com. We got our wire strippers from these guys here, DigiKey in the US. We also got the jaws here from DigiKey. It's quite difficult to get the hold of those in the UK. The crimpers themselves we got from eBay for £20. So these are the crimp jaws here for the Paladin crimper, PA2033, £24.86. They are not the cheapest jaws in the world. You can get cheaper tools off eBay for a matter of pounds, but in my experience, they don't create perfect crimps every time. And in our particular application, where we're not redoing a whole harness that's out of the car, but we're putting boots onto an existing harness, we need to get it right the first time. And I do not want to try and save a few pounds on a cheap tool only to ruin the entire wiring harness. So do bear that in mind if you ever come to do this job.